Hello, my name is Tom Hanley. I'm an instructor for Juniper Networks Education Services. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about uh, high availability clustering. Right, so with high availability clustering, we're taking the same, two of the same exact type of SRX device, right, same model, right, and connecting them together. We have a couple of connections, a control plane connection and a data plane connection. The control plane is an active passive scenario, so only one of the, uh, one of the SRXs will be the control plane, right, and then uh, we could also have an active active data plane redundancy scenario. Right. Uh, so with this in mind, we have a stateful type of session failover that occurs. Right. And that can include things like network address translation, application layer gateways, any IP security rights uh, association information could also be uh, synchronized as well. All right. And, and this will kind of also uh, include uh, automatic configuration um, uh, synchronization between the new two nodes. So if we make a configuration change, the change will uh, be present on both nodes at the same time. Uh, and it's important to note that it's it's like behaving like one box when we connect these two nodes together in a cluster configuration. We also have se sessions of uh, synchronization that occurs as well. So any changes in sessions that occur, sessions come up, they go down, right? They will be synchronized across both nodes. When we're dealing with a cluster, to put a node into a cluster, we have uh, a couple of parameters that we need to configure, right, when we put it into a cluster configuration. One is the cluster ID, right? You see the range there from 1 to 15, right? Um, it's important that um, the, the nodes will be in the same cluster and they can only belong to one cluster, right? You see the, the cluster ID of 0, that, that kind of indicates that we're not uh, going to participate in a clustered configuration. So once you configure the cluster, then you configure the particular node number, right, the node ID for uh, the, the, the specific SRX in the cluster. And that is uh, kind of a binary thing. It can either be 0 or 1. Uh, that value will have a determining factor on uh, the interface name parameter. Right, so what I'm kind of talking about is the actual first name, uh, first number within the interface name, which is normally kind of the slot number or the flexible pick concentrator number, right? Um, that will be uh, kind of dictated by uh, the node ID number. We'll see kind of a reference to that a little bit later. So when you put a node into a cluster configuration, we see the example command that actually does that. Right, so set chassis cluster, cluster ID, node ID, and then reboot. We would do this first to the node we want to be uh, the primary node within the control plane, right? And then once that is completed, reboot, and comes up into a cluster configuration, then we would do the same thing uh, with the other node, uh, which will be the secondary node in the control plane. Okay, so uh, when we're dealing with a redundancy we have uh, and uh, clustering, we have this concept of redundancy group. When you see a redundancy group is an abstract concept. It has objects in both nodes, right? So, uh, so we'll have uh, basically one and one of the one of the objects and one of the nodes uh, in the group will be uh, will be the primary uh, uh, node for that group redundancy group, and the other one will be the secondary, and it will not be active for that group. Right, uh, and uh, with redundancy groups, we can have uh, a range of from 0 to 255. Redundancy group 0 is reserved specifically for the relationship between the two routing engines, the control plane, right? So routing engine 0, routing engine 1 in the control plane would be present within redundancy group 0. Redundancy group 1 through 255 are for redundant interfaces called REFs. Right, um, so basically, and and we'll have one uh, uh, one node will be active. Uh, that will be the active interface uh, within that uh, redundancy group configuration, just like it is in the control plane. 
what we're showing you here is the actual configuration, uh, and I'll kind of demonstrate this a little bit later, of, uh, uh, of the uh, redundant interfaces. So what we need to do first is we need to define the ref count. Please note that this is done in edit uh, chassis cluster configuration. So we configure the ref count. This basic, because these are pseudo interfaces, this tells Junos, right, to create uh, the number of pseudo interfaces that we need to support. Right for this application, so we define what that number is here. Then we configure the refs themselves, redundant interfaces, right? Uh, and when we kind of let's say if we put a ref count of zero, that will that will mean that Junos will automatically create ref zero and ref one uh, pseudo interfaces. So if we're configuring the refs, we'll configure the ref number underneath the redundant uh, Ethernet options. We'll define what redundancy group it's a member of. Okay, and then uh, we'll configure the interface properties as well. Right, what we're seeing up here is the actual uh, interfaces that would be met from the two different nodes. So one interface from node zero, right? It it, it is a member of uh, the ref parent. Okay, and then the other interface right in the other node, in, the, in which case it could be node one, right? And it's uh, a member of ref zero, uh, the ref group as well, which could be ref zero. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, what I like to do is to kind of show you a little uh, demonstration here. All right, so after I do and accomplish that first command that puts uh, that puts the uh, the node uh, the first node into a redundancy configuration, the set chassis cluster cluster ID node ID reboot command. Once it's, it's done with the reboot option, uh, this is a look at the, the parameter, the, the the prompt that you would get once it's in a redundant configuration. See primary node zero, right, would be the prompt. And if I go to the to the other node, right in the mix I would see right uh, in that uh, secondary uh, colon node two, node one okay right so basically telling it that 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 uh, particular node and both nodes are in a uh, redundant cluster configuration right so some of the things we would want to configure right uh, would be things like uh, the uh, redundancy group right so we go into configuration right and you know that you have to be in private con mode configuration when you uh, are doing uh, any clustering configuration, right? So uh, ch uh, chassis cluster, right? So what I want to do is I want to show you the configuration of a redundancy group, well, actually a couple of redundancy groups, the one that will be uh, used to support redundancy group, the, the relationship between the two routing engines, which is redundancy group zero. So basically, I'm defining redundancy group zero. I'm, I'm defining node, right, uh, zero. And uh, what its priority is, the highest priority wins. So I'm going to kind of define that as priority of, of 200. I want that particular node to be the primary normally. So in node one, I'll set the priority for that to be uh, 100. Okay. Now I'm going to so that's uh, redundancy group zero, which is the relationship between uh, two routing engines. Now what I want to do now is to uh, go into uh, another redundancy group that's going to uh, be used for redundant interfaces. So, right. So a set uh, redundancy group in this case one. Right. And I'm going to define uh, node zero here as being a its priority. Well. And I'm going to find that as arbitrarily as being 150. I, I also want to prefer that to be the uh, primary for uh, this redundancy group. And node 1 being a priority of uh, 50. So what I could also do within uh, a redundancy group that's uh, 1 through 25, that's uh, for the redundant interfaces, I can also use a preempt option. Right, and that means that the node that has the highest priority will be the primary when it's up and available. So I can kind of put that into my configuration, right, as you can see here uh, as well. All right, so that's kind of give you a look at the configuration of redundancy groups. Now I want to kind of uh, go to show you a configuration of the interfaces. All right, uh, one thing I forgot to do is uh, under edit uh, chassis. Cluster. 
I want to set the ref count, right? And let's set it to two, right? So I set that to two, and now I'm going to go to the uh, edit interface, and I want to create a configuration for ref. The first ref with ref zero, right? Um, unit zero, family. Right, so the interface properties are configured there. So also within the ref, I want to uh, assign it to, this is where I associate it with the redundancy group. So uh, with uh, redundant Ethernet options, redundancy group, right, uh, one. Okay, so now it's, uh, it's, it will inherit the properties from uh, redundancy group one that we uh, configured a little bit earlier. So I also want to now configure the interfaces that are members of that ref. Right, so um, so basically 008 of 004, which is on node 0, okay, and uh, gigabit Ethernet options, redundancy, and I want to make it uh, basically associated with REF 0, right? So that would be the interface that would be on node 0. So the interface that's on node 1, right, um, basically would, uh, because this is an SRX. 240, we have basically five slots. So the first node, node zero, will be slot numbers for the first uh, uh, digit in the interface name, zero through four, right? And for node one, it would be um, five through nine. So uh, this one would be five slash zero slash four, right? And uh, setting up the Ubit Ethernet options, redundant parent, and then uh, ref zero here again. Okay, so uh, now I can commit this configuration. This takes a little bit of time. Then uh, once it's done um, uh, with this uh, commit operation, I want to show you a couple of commands uh, that, uh, to verify right uh, what we've um, actually uh, configured to see if it's uh, has been accomplished correctly. All right, so uh, first of all, I want to show you the interfaces. So show interface uh, terse, and we want to focus in on the, um, the ref, so uh, match ref, zero. And we'll see basically the properties. We see the two interfaces that right are associated with REST zero. You see the uh, relationship being established here, and then we see the the uh, the REF interface right configuration um, as well. Right. So uh, what I also want to do is show chassis uh, cluster uh, status. Right, uh, and then in this we'll see the the two redundancy groups. We see redundancy group uh, zero, right, and uh, basically node zero with its higher priority is a primary there. And for redundancy group one, right, uh, because it has a higher priority, node zero will also be um, the uh, primary node for that uh, that group as well. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.